We're going to talk to Brian Germain now for this week's Safety First, and we're talking about digging out. Hey, Brian, how's it going today? Hey, David, I'm doing great. I'm having a fantastic day. So um, today's topic is one that uh, that you want to address. Um, I, I, yeah. Let's let's talk about uh, digging out of the corner. It's a, it's a juicy one, isn't it, right? The ability to do a low turn is, I think, trumped uh, in importance by the ability to dig yourself up. Because let's face it, sometimes we find ourselves low and steep and the ground is coming. And if you have the ability, if you have the skill and the understanding of how to dig out quickly, you're probably going to live longer. And uh, that's kind of what I'm all about, old skydivers, creating old skydivers. So uh, the first concept, I think, that helps people to really get this, this process of digging out is to be flying all your turns in a way that you're what we call coordinated. So you're flying with the relative wind straight from the front and not yanking a toggle so aggressively that you're sideways to the wind. You've unloaded part of your parachute. And of course, you know, when you dig a toggle turn, when you let off that toggle turn quickly, you point yourself at the ground even worse because you've reduced drag of the parachute. So flying coordinated turns, uh, I'll, I'll defer, I wrote an article that uh, the people can read, they'll uh, probably find it helpful, uh, it's called Clean Up Your Turns, it's on dropzone.com. But that's the first part, if you're flying a sloppy turn, all bets are off, this stuff doesn't work as well. So the second thing to talk about is the way that we give the input to dig ourselves out matters too. So it's not as much about how much break you add to pull yourself out of a dive. It's about how you give it. So if we apply breaks slowly, let's say you're hanging in full flight and you apply your breaks slowly, add, 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 until you get down to the three-quarter breaks, you'll create a pitch change where your, your parachute slows down and you end up out in front of it. And that consequently will reduce your descent rate, maybe even level you out at the bottom of that stroke, but it's a slow process. If you then let your, let your toggles back up and let, let her fly for a couple seconds and then really wail on it, you know, from, from the point where you've taken up the slack in the brake lines and you just kind of nail it, say six or eight inches really quickly, you get a completely different response. The canopy will uh, change direction of flight sooner. Um, and if you happen to be in a dive when you do that, you'll recover sooner. So this process obviously requires some physical strength. Uh, it's a sad thing when, when people try to pull out of a dive uh, and they simply don't have uh, the tricep muscles to, to change their direction of flight prior to impact. But most of the time, that's not the case. Most of the time, they do just like I did years ago the first time I smacked into the ground. I made my low turn to show off for the crowd. And I did it a little lower because I didn't use an altimeter back in those days to to initiate. I just sort of you know, did an eyeball gut level assessment and wailed on it. And the ground was coming. And I applied the brakes down to about half brakes and waited. And I did it sort of smoothly, expecting that it would work because when I turned higher, it did work. And that was the last thing I remember prior to smacking my butt on the ground really hard. So it was a wake up call to start learning how to dig myself out better, more effectively. So this is where I, I discovered through loads of test jumps and, of course, talking to other people as well. How do you pull yourself out quickly? Well, you give a sharp jab on the toggle, kind of a jab and hold. And each canopy is different in the amount that you pull down, but it's probably less than you think. You don't want to be burying it all the way to the bottom. That's not going to work very effectively. But to kind of sh shove it real hard and add that drag to the canopy in a short period of time. And of course, when you're going faster, drag matters more. And so if you can get that drag in there quickly, suddenly you'll feel the lines tense up. And you'll feel the change of direction of flight as your weight increases, as the G loading increases, and the canopy will start to pull out of the dive. So that's a big one. Uh, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, right? Where you kind of give it quickly, right? I do. What, what uh, is going to happen if we, if we pull down too far, though? Well, if you, if you bury it all the way to the bottom, theoretically, you can do a high-speed stall. So canopies, uh, just like any fixed-wing aircraft, have the ability to stall at virtually any airspeed. A stall is not really about uh, what 
airspeed you're carrying, it's about the angle of attack. And if you can swing that pitch excessively, um, even at a higher speed, the canopy can trash out and not convert airspeed into lift uh, effectively. Now, of course, most people are not strong enough to do that on the steering toggles, fortunately. Um, you'll be able to get it down to maybe half, and that's as far as it'll, it'll go for you, and it'll start to recover, and then it'll soften up. And so that's where you kind of consciously uh, follow through or, or ease off as, as it is appropriate. Um, so I don't find it most of the time that's really the concern. It's about giving that quick, sharp input as soon as you realize you've got a problem. Uh, and bringing it out. And a lot of times you only need a little tap because a shallowing is all that's necessary to, to put you into a safer circumstance. And then you sort of keep flying your canopy all the way to the landing. Um, you may not have to, to finish it off right then and there. I've seen, so some, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I've seen some people uh, um, get into trouble um, when they were in the corner, maybe just a little bit, and thought that they could still pull out on rears. You want to talk a little bit about right. the, the difference between yeah. trying to plane out yeah. on rears versus on toggles? Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. The, of course, rear risers are a fantastic way to extend your swoop distance if you turn high enough. If you sort of ease out of your turn high enough that the canopy's lift starts to take over, if you think about it, you're not offering all that much, much drag by applying rears. Uh, it's it's not a, a flat surface like the trailing edge when you pull down the toggles. And so really, if you think of it this way, you're not flaring with the rears. You're simply changing the design of the parachute from uh, a dive gear canopy to something more like a stiletto that, that pulls itself out. So you're, you're flattening that trim differential. So the canopy is sort of flying itself out. But if you're low and steep, rear risers really don't give you a, a very quick pullout past a certain point. If you're if you're super steep, you really want to switch to the toggles and give it a sharp jab and pull it out that way, because the rears very often will not only uh, you'll continue your descent. In some cases, you'll you'll precipitate that high speed stall that we were talking about. It's even easier to do on the rears. And I've seen people land with their canopy behind them trying to pull out of the dive on the rears, and it uh, didn't work. Wouldn't work out terribly well for them. So. Uh, that's that's an important thing to do. And if, if you're working on rears, especially in the beginning, you tend to work on the best case scenario. You make your turn, you fluidly go to the rears, you add the rears, and then you fly it all the way to level flight, and then you make your transition at level flight. Well, what if you were to also once in a while practice making your transition from rears to toggles while you're still on the hill, while you're still diving to the ground, uh, to make that part of your muscle memory package where you discover this isn't working you know i'm i'm in a downdraft i turned too low who knows maybe it's uh something that you didn't uh, anticipate but the ground is still common and you want to have that uh, fixed action pattern uh, in your back pocket to save you to drop those rears and just continue on using toggles instead when, in, when in doubt get on the toggles get on the brakes because drag is what shifts is, shifts your pitch faster Right? especially at high speed, when you induce significant amounts of drag by those tail points, right? it's just the trailing edge of the parachute that you're pulling down when you hit the brakes, um, it really moves your, your body out in front much, much faster than the rears do. So it's uh, that you don't dig out with the rears. So that's a big part of the puzzle. The other aspect that I like to talk about is the, the habit that uh, I'm not sure where it comes from, uh, I think maybe it's the disorientation in a turn, but people find themselves in a turn down low and they think, all right, well, the reason why I'm diving at the ground, the reason why things are, or the circumstances have become dire is because of the turn. So if I stop the turn, things will get better. And although that's partly true, if you focus your energy on stopping the turn instead of increasing the angle of attack, it's instead of swinging the pitch, getting your body out in front of the parachute, you end up spending the rest of your life trying to level out your roll angle, and you smack the ground with wings level. So it's quite important to think of it more as pitch before roll. If you're in a dive, you spike those brakes, even though you still have bank angle, you'll start to reduce your descent rate substantially, and you'll create time to roll out to zero bank angle. Or maybe be doing both at the same time. Well, of course, there's a synergy of both things going on. But if you focus your your initial, you know, you know, oh shit moment 
to spike the brakes, then I'll deal with the roll uh, and, and sort of overlap the two in, in the midsection of that maneuver, you end up recovering much, much sooner than if you simply roll out and then spike the brakes. By then it's too late. All right. Well, Brian, that's a big topic. Um, I think maybe we should talk more about it sometime in a feature segment. Um, yeah, I'll be talking about I'll be talking about that the rest of my life. <laughs> it's a very important thing, and the truth is that I I kind of have to show it. It's it's kind of a a video uh, thing that I, I'm thinking that I need to put out a, a little bit of a YouTube video showing what I'm talking about here. Uh, it's it's an important skill. It's something that we can rehearse in the sky over and over and over and get good at it. We become a little bit more bulletproof by exercising our skill and rehearsing this ability to dig ourselves out of a low turn. All right. Well, Brian, good stuff as always. Um, we're going to read more about you at uh, BigAirSportsWithAZ.com. Yep, that's one of the places. Lots of places to find me on the web. If you want to find me, you can get me. All right, Brian, we'll talk to you on the next episode. All right, Dave, have a great one.